The ideal fresh baguette is complex in perception. It's dense yet holy. It has that appetizing, rich, natural wheat aroma and flavor to match its texture that sports a deep, dark brown crust with a nice golden yellow crumb at the center. It cracks under a little pressure, giving out a series of clean and crisp sounds. And to top it off, it's made using only flour, salt, water, and yeast. Traditionally in France, baguettes are codified by Le Décret Pain, the famous 1993 French bread law. Some say the law was meant to protect a traditional way of bread baking that perfectly hits all five of our senses. Others consider it a standard to look up to. The law regulates several standards for baguettes, and while in this video we're going to be making homemade baguettes that are a little different, at their core, our baguettes are essentially adhering to these ideal traditional baguettes. In fact, that will be our challenge today. We're going to be making better homemade baguettes with the basic tools we have on hand, and of course, based on science. Researchers have long established the importance of the crumb firmness and crust brittleness when it comes to taste and flavor. Being made with only a few ingredients, a baguette derives its aroma and flavor from the volatile organic compounds released through the long process of timely and slow fermentation that the dough has gone through before being baked. When this long fermented dough is transformed into a freshly baked baguette, and when we bite into it, its firm crumb and crisp crust boost its aroma and flavor to the next level by triggering a chain chemical reaction in our mouth to release even more volatile organic compounds. So besides the long fermentation, getting a crisp crust with a firm and chewy crumb are essential in baking a better homemade baguette. Obviously, there are many steps in the process of baguette baking that demand our full attention. First, long fermentation means using a very small amount of yeast. It's more about taste development than producing the specific amount of carbon dioxide to puff up the dough. So there's no need for an excessive amount of yeast. The challenge here is more of the execution timing of the steps in the process. For our baguette recipe, we're going to use poolish to help develop taste. So it's essential to understand how a poolish works. For more information, you may want to watch our previous video on poolish. Next, a crisp crust calls for baking at a high temperature or a rather long baking time. This is a familiar challenge that we have learned to confront head on while home baking with an electric oven. As explained in our previous video on making better homemade pizzas, we're going to use tangjong or yudane to overcome some of the shortcomings of using an electric oven. Adding tangjong or yudane will help the dough retain moisture during and after baking. This addition will not alter much of the crumb structure, although it will make the bread softer. We need to retain moisture during baking so that we can bake for longer with our electric oven in order to get that crisp crust while minimizing the risk of getting a bread that ends up too dry or too hard at the same time. Also, for a baguette coming out of the oven, the extra moisture in the bread as a result of adding the tangjong or yudane will help in delaying retrogradation that tends to promote the unwanted staling of the bread. This is crucial for a bread made from a lean dough such as baguettes, as there is no sugar, butter, or fat to slow down the speed of staling. Without tangchung or yudane, baguettes have to be consumed immediately, and they won't taste as good overnight. As an extra step to better help realize all of this, we're going to create enough steam in the oven in the initial stage of baking so as to give our dough the chance to rise and expand to its optimal volume. With all those facts in mind, let's get down to making our baguettes. All right, we'll start by making the tangchong or yudane and the poolish. These two need to be left overnight, so I usually make them at around the same time, starting with the tangchong or yudane. In a mixing bowl, we add 100 grams of boiling water, and then 50 grams of flour, you want to make sure the water is very hot to ensure the flour properly undergoes gelatinization. We'll mix it well with a wooden rolling pin, our tool of choice, but you could use any heat resistant tool. It shouldn't take very long, just a few minutes. 
And now we'll let the tangzhong cool, cover it before putting it in the fridge overnight. This is supposed to naturally enhance the sweetness of the dough later. Okay, that was tangzhong. Now let's make the poolish. We have a medium-sized bowl, and we've already measured out 50 grams of bread flour into it. Then we add 0.5 grams of yeast. Next, we're just using a pair of chopsticks to roughly stir the flour and yeast together. After which, we're pouring in 50 grams of water, and we'll continue using the pair of chopsticks just to combine everything well. They're really convenient for mixing the poolish. Now, this shouldn't take too long to mix together, and even with enough mixing, it'll look like a very rough lump of flour and water, which is exactly what it is. A few things to note. First, as explained before, we have to refrain from using too much yeast for the poolish. We want to give the poolish ample time to slowly develop the volatile organic compounds for our baguettes. Using too much yeast will unnecessarily speed up the fermentation. This is as important as the hydration of the poolish that promotes enzymatic activity. Also, note that you want to make sure that the bowl is large enough to contain the poolish when it has expanded. It can rise pretty significantly, so it's probably better to use a bowl large enough for the purpose. After around 12 hours in the fridge, the poolish will turn into a smooth and jiggly mixture. When we see a lot of bubbles on the top and the surface dips down slightly after reaching its peak, that's when we know it's done. It should also smell very good at this point. So now we're finally ready to make the final dough. We've got all the ingredients gathered here and a large mixing bowl. The first one to go in is our poolish, getting every last bit of it. This will really contribute to the flavors of the baguettes. After poolish, we're adding the tangcheng or yudane, which we've already explained the benefits of adding. Then we're going to add 210 grams of water, 10 grams of salt, and one gram of yeast. We'll give this a good mix first to dissolve everything, doing our best to break up the poolish and tangcheng or yudane. Continue until it looks a bit more homogenous. Then we add 100 grams of all-purpose flour and 300 grams of bread flour. We'll combine this well now, just going with our scraper. Keep in mind that we are adding 100 grams of all-purpose flour, 11% protein content, to 300 grams of bread flour, 13% protein content, to get a mixed flour with about 12.5% protein content. These flours have ash contents of about 0.65%, so the combined flour is roughly equal to the T65 of French flour. We want to continue mixing this with the scraper, just trying to get everything roughly combined. Just for a minute or two, making sure to clean up the sides of the bowl. When we've combined most of the loose flour into the dough, we're then going to turn the dough out onto our work surface and do some slap and folds on it for five to six minutes. Slap and folds are a nice way of building gluten in dough that's too sticky to knead. We do them by picking up the dough with both hands, slapping the bottom down. Allowing the dough to stretch up and then folding it back down. Every time we do another slap and fold, we rotate the dough to get a different size. This is actually pretty fun and quick once you get used to doing it. I will note though that you shouldn't use too much force to slap and fold, especially in the beginning, since that might send the dough flying. We just want to keep doing this until everything is well combined and the dough ceases to be as sticky as it was when we started. This looks pretty good, so we'll next leave it to rest in the bowl. We're going to roughly shape the dough into a round boule, after which we move it into the bowl with the help of the scraper just to scoop up any loose bits. We'll then cover the bowl and leave it for 30 minutes. This is just to give the dough time to relax and let the flour absorb some of the water. It's very warm here, so you can already see quite a bit of yeast activity. That's fine. And after 30 minutes, we're gonna come back to do one set of stretch and folds. We're gonna do eight stretch and folds, working our way around the dough twice. 
The stretch and folds are very easy to do. Just pull up one side of the dough as high as it'll go without breaking and then fold it back down. The dough should be much easier to work with after the 30 minutes. And as you can see, it's much smoother, holds together better. And this is exactly what we want. Since that is the last stretch and fold, we cover it and after that we'll let the dough rest for another 30 minutes before coming back to do another set of stretch and folds. Same thing as before, moving around the dough, dipping our hands into the bowl as needed. The dough should feel even stronger, no need to pull it harder, just let it stretch naturally. Cover the bowl again and leave for another 30 minutes. After which we're going to do our last round of stretch and folds. This time only doing four since the dough is very tight and strong already. It should also feel very light and airy. Stretch the dough gently. We want to try to prevent the dough from degassing. We can do a quick window pane test on the dough too and look at that. It's gorgeous and stretches out without ripping. That's a good sign. Okay, so after that, we'll flip the dough and do a few quick coil folds, tidying up the dough surface. And now that the last round of stretch and folds is done, we want to let the dough bulk ferment until it doubles in size, which should take around 40 minutes here. The timing may vary greatly depending on your room temperature, so be sure to keep an eye on the dough. Actually, you could also put it in the fridge overnight to slow the fermentation for more flavor and to adjust the dough schedule to better suit yours. However, if you retard the dough, then you need to leave the dough out before you continue with the recipe. This is to let it come to room temperature so that the gluten in the dough can relax and we can have an easier time working with the dough. Retarding the dough will also influence the appearance of the baguettes we made, giving the baguettes numerous small blisters on the crust. These blisters are caused by the carbon dioxide slowly leaking from the surface of the dough. All right, so here's the dough after the bulk fermentation. It's fully expanded. You can see from the side that the gluten structure is absolutely beautiful with numerous air pockets, which is just what we want. Open up the silicone cap and it smells absolutely fantastic. It's got a good jiggle to it due to all those gas bubbles. So we're gonna dust our work surface with plenty of flour. The dough is pretty sticky, so make sure you coat the surface well. We'll also flour the top of the dough while it's in the bowl, another measure to prevent sticking. Then using a scraper, we'll scrape down the sides of the bowl, moving the dough out onto the counter with the floured side down. And we're good. We're now going to immediately divide the dough into four pieces. Using just a bit of flour to outline where we'll cut, we're going to decisively cut into it with another scraper. It should be pretty easy to divide, just make sure to be quick and straightforward. We're not weighing the pieces, by the way, just eyeballing the dough so that they're around the same size. After all, what really matters is just that they taste and look good, right? We're not going to fuss over a size difference. Okay, now we want to pre-shape the dough. This is pretty easy. Just take the two edges of the dough and then pull them in to get a more uniform shape. And to build some surface tension, we roll the dough up. Then tuck in the sides with a scraper to create straight sides and tidy up. This will help us a lot when we shape the baguettes after this. Make sure not to pre-shape the dough too tightly. We just want to quickly and lightly get them into shape. Another thing you should note is that we're doing our best to make sure not too much flour gets folded into the dough. So only the outer layer, the part with tension, gets floured. Don't put flour on the wet inside part. This is a principle to stick by for both pre-shaping and shaping to avoid dense and tough baguettes. We raise the hydration to make sure the dough turns out perfect 
and folding in too much flour will ruin that. Once all the dough pieces have been pre-shaped, we're going to cover them and then leave them to bench rest for about 15 minutes. This will give the dough time to relax so that we can shape them easily later. In the meantime, we're going to prepare the proofing spot for the baguettes. We're using this cloth here and just propping it up on both sides. You can use any cloth you like really, but it's a good idea to make sure it has some structure to it so that it can sort of keep the baguettes in shape. Now, to prevent the baguettes from sticking to the cloth, we'll dust the cloth very well with plenty of rice flour. This will help absorb any humidity and prevent the baguettes from sticking to anything. Once the time's up, the dough is done with its bench rest, it's relaxed, and now we can shape it. We'll start by flouring the tops of the pieces of dough. Then using a scraper, we're going to go under one and scoop it up. Flip it over so the smooth top is on the bottom. We'll also lightly pat it out a bit, degassing it a little. And after the dough has been sufficiently widened, we're gonna pull the top edge down to beyond the midway line. We'll press the seal with our palm. Again, being light-handed here so as not to degas the dough too much. We'll then rotate the dough 180 degrees and do the same thing to the other edge, pulling it down along its length and making sure to make the bottom side of the dough taut and smooth. Then to build even more tension, we fold the dough in half with one hand while sealing it with the palm of the other. You could also use your fingertips to seal here. This is a pretty quick process once you get used to it, allowing you to make quite a few baguettes in one go. Then we're gonna roll the baguette to even it out in thickness. You've got two choices here now. You could press harder at the ends to make a sharp baguette, or just apply an even amount of pressure and get a round baguette. This is just a matter of personal preference, so it's entirely up to you which way you'd like to shape it. And once it's been shaped, we can move the baguettes over to the dusted cloth. Make sure to prop it up on one side and pull up the cloth on the other side to press the baguette into the desired shape. We're going to put the next baguette right besides this one to press it and we'll continue that placement with the rest of the baguettes. Okay, so we'll continue shaping the rest of the baguettes. It really is quick once you get the hang of it. If the pre-shipping was done right and the dough is relaxed enough, the whole process should go very smoothly, making it easy to form uniform and long baguettes. Shape it well to really ensure you build plenty of tension on the smooth side of the baguette while avoiding making it so tense that it ends up ripping. You'll also want to pop any large bubbles that show up on the baguettes, just lightly tapping them to degas. We also want to control the amount of flour we use. If you need some, just use a small amount to dust your hands in the baguette. We really want to avoid adding too much flour into the baguette. We'll pull up the other side to really press the baguettes in and cover them. Now it's time to leave them for their final proof. The exact timing depends on your room temperature, but here we're leaving them for about 45 minutes. If you'd like to extend the time, you could also cover them and put them in the fridge. Around 30 minutes before they finish proofing, we're gonna preheat our oven to its hottest temperature. In our case, we set the temperature dial of the oven to 250 degrees Celsius. The actual temperature though is around 230 degrees Celsius. The key takeaway is that we need to set it as high as our oven can go. We're also putting in a heat proof container filled with lava rocks. We're preheating them now, and we're gonna pour boiling water on top of them later to steam the dough. This steam will help the dough rise up by keeping the outer layer moist, allowing it to expand for longer without drying up. And once both the dough and oven are ready, we're ready to continue. 
First, we'll get the dough out using a board. You could use a cutting board or some cardboard, anything sturdy enough to hold the baguette. Make sure to flip the dough gently. You don't want to degas it after all. We're then going to place the dough onto a baking tray with parchment paper on top. Do this for another baguette. Okay, now it's time to score the baguettes on the parchment paper. We're using a razor blade directly. Really, it's important to be firm here, making a near straight line down the baguette. It should feel pretty smooth if you have the right angle and the dough is in good condition. We do several scores to ensure the baguettes expand properly. We're also making sure to score the baguettes at a tilted angle. A tip I have is to lightly oil the razor. This will help it glide and prevent it from sticking. Make sure to keep a distance between individual scores on each baguette. This will prevent them from joining together into one long cut. Then, just before the dough goes into the oven, we're going to pour boiling water over the lava rocks, being very careful since everything is very hot. And as quickly as we can after scoring, we want to get the dough into the oven. We're baking the baguettes until they get a firm crumb with a brittle and crisp crust. Usually, we want to bake at the highest temperature that we can set on our home oven. In our case, as I've said before, our old and trusty electric oven can only go as high as 230 degrees Celsius, even though the dial reads 250 degrees Celsius. With this limitation and baking with the steaming lava rocks placed at the bottom, we bake for 25 to 30 minutes on bottom heat. Then we take out the rocks, change the top bottom heat, lower the temperature by about 20 degrees Celsius to about 210 degrees Celsius for five minutes. After that, we switch to top heat until the baguettes turn dark golden brown, which usually takes 10 to 15 minutes. Again, we bake the baguettes this way so that we get that crumb firmness and crust brittleness, while trying to avoid getting a very dark and burnt crust. Naturally, the baking times for the baguettes can vary depending on your specific oven, so make sure to experiment for the best results. The guiding steps are relatively simple. The initial stage of baking is to ensure the baguettes rise properly, which will promise a firm and open crumb structure. The later stage of baking is to get the dark golden brown crust that we want, an indicator of a crisp and brittle crust. And look at what we've got, a crisp and dark brown crust with a firm and chewy crumb. Beautifully baked on all sides, and thanks to the tangchong or yudane we added, it's not dry at all, even after enduring such a long baking duration, with the added benefit of lasting longer due to the extra moisture content. Of course, with the introduction of tangchong or yudane, the texture of our baguettes is slightly different from the traditional baguettes. They are firm, yet they have a small, small amount of that mochi softness typical of tangchong or yudane breads. So ready for an enticing bite. We can repeat the same steps for the remaining two baguettes. And we're good. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and bye!